This is the Lakes Creek Wetland Mitigation Bank project. It's not a bank like you go in and deposit money. It's a whole different concept. Atlanta County needs to reconstruct a lot of their aging bridges. They have to get wetlands permits for those activities and a condition of the wetlands permits is to do wetland mitigation. What is wetland mitigation? It's taking an area that isn't wetland and making it into a wetland or taking an area that's a degraded wetland, let's say it's a farmed wetland or uh, dominated by invasive species and making it into a higher quality wetland. A while back the county realized that they were facing mitigation requirements on a number of road, intersection and bridge projects where they had to mitigate on a site-by-site -site basis uh, for the disturbances to wetlands as a result of the construction activities for those projects. And uh, we just thought there had to be a better way, a more efficient way. The county has to get permits to rebuild these bridges. And they usually end up being wider than the original bridges for safety. So they're filling wetlands there. Well, they need to replace those wetlands. Well, if they replace the wetlands right next to the bridge all over the county, you'd have these little new wetlands all over the place, not really having much impact and maybe people wouldn't be tending to them and making sure they worked really well. So the idea is to plan ahead and in advance construct or enhance wetlands in what's called a bank and that's where we are today. This project, Lakes Creek, is a, a great example of uh, mitigation banking in that you have a government agency uh, showing how uh, by being a little progressive uh, they can make the whole process of mitigation efficient. We started the process probably 2005, 2006 with Amy Green Environmental. Uh, did a, a site selection study that came up with about 15 or 16 potential sites for a wetland bank uh, location. Chose a couple of those, investigated them, and then ended up uh, selecting uh, the Berman property as it was known, which is the Lakes Creek site. April 2013, we began construction on Lakes Creek Wetland Mitigation Bank. Mathis Construction Company broke ground the last week in April and began uh, excavating over 45,000 cubic yards. The areas that we're looking at right now had the most excavation and this is what we turned into our tidal marsh area. This upcoming spring it'll be planted with a variety of uh, species tolerant of salt water such as Spartina alterniflora which is uh, salt metal core grass, Spartina patens which is uh, salt hay grass, giant core grass which is Spartina sinusoroides. This area is mapped as foraging and nesting habitat for state listed uh, black crowned night herons, yellow crowned night herons, uh, it's foraging habitat for bald eagles. Um, so it's it's a uh, it's critical area and critical habitat that we're we're preserving as part of the project. Where we're walking right now, these trees uh, have been planted here to create an upland buffer around the entire uh, tidal marsh. All created, all planted here for habitat purposes and to give a, a buffer to the the wetland areas. The freshwater at the high end of the project, the, the freshwater forested wetlands, the non-tidal wetlands, the brackish wetlands, they are derived from groundwater. So the data that we collected which established the, the groundwater flow throughout the site, those wetlands were excavated to intercept that seasonally high groundwater, which is above the daily high tide limit. So those wetlands derive hydrology from groundwater, whereas the salt marsh derives its hydrology primarily from the tide coming and going on a daily basis. In order to ensure that there's sufficient tidal water, we had to excavate a channel system from Lakes Creek here in order to flow through the mitigation site so that the water flows in and out. The channels also provide a valuable subtidal habitat. It provides a, a pathway for the crabs and, and the fish to migrate from the larger creeks into the smaller creeks, and it provides a nursery habitat, which is the marsh. At the upper end, it involves the uh, creation of freshwater, non-tidal forested wetlands, which transition into a, a brackish wetland, which is where you have some influence of, of salt water or tides. So the, the plants that grow in those brackish wetlands have to be 
tolerant of the salinity. And then at the low end of the project, it transitions into a, a salt marsh, which is flooded regularly. The first day that we release the tide into this area, uh, species such as killifish, mummy chugs, um, fiddler crabs were already using you know, the tidal marsh without even vegetation in it. Uh, that brought in different kind of bird species such as sandpipers, great egrets, cattle egrets, uh, snowy egrets, great blue heron. We've even seen bald eagles fly over. So this is uh, sufficing as a habitat without even plants in it already. So the benefit of uh, Atlanta County uh, being progressive and efficient by designing and building this mitigation up front is it's providing habitat right now for the estuary, for the fisheries, for us consuming fish. The benefit for the county is by having one large construction project done and out of the way up front, it saves them money because they don't have to stop at every project, design, build, monitor, a mitigation site. And in the end, we're getting a larger uh, ecosystem than a bunch of smaller wetland mitigation sites scattered throughout the county. Well, the value, especially to, to us at Atlantic County of a, of a wetlands bank, is that it allows us to efficiently accumulate wetlands credits so we can accumulate the credits all at once on one site and then debit those credits against our needs as the projects go to construction. These tidal marshes are actually the base of the food chain for the estuary, for the creek, the river, the bay, all the organic material that's produced by these plants end up in the bay and become food for um, small microorganisms which ultimately become food for smaller critters and, and then food for fish and shellfish and then we eat the fish. So we're all part of this ecosystem. 